Hi, I'm Estelle Parsons. Don't go anywhere. Profiles will be coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Tiffany Walker. This week's guest is award-winning actress Estelle Parsons. In the late 60s, Estelle won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in Bonnie and Clyde, which also starred Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. One year later, Parsons earned a second Oscar nomination playing a religious fanatic in Paul Newman's Rachel Rachel. Specializing in playing fanatical and neurotic women, Estelle has found success on stage, on screen, and television. After a short break, we'll join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes actress Estelle Parsons to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Oscar award-winning actress Estelle Parsons began her show business career in television and holds the distinction as being the first female political reporter on network television when she was hired by the Today Show in the 1960s. In the 90s, Parsons would again find success on TV as Roseanne Arnold's screechy lunatic mother on Roseanne for a 10-year period. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes multi-talented Estelle Parsons to Profile. Estelle Parsons. How do you do? It's an honor to meet you. Thank you. Welcome to our show, Profiles. Thank you. And I guess I'll take my glasses off. That'd yeah, be good. okay. And uh, currently here in New York City, which is your home anyway. Yes. Many of our viewers will know you as an Oscar winner. I hope so. That's something to be, I mean, really proud of. And in 1967, you won yours as Best Supporting Actor for your betrayal as Blanche in Bonnie and Clyde with Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. And Gene Hackman. And I, I don't want to And leave Michael him. Pollard. It must have been a big thrill. Oh, it was great. What, to win the Academy Award? Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was fun, but I, I'm not really a, a movie person, you know. Yeah, I work on the theater. stage, yeah. and I really only did that movie because I loved working with Arthur Penn in the theater. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, it was just all very, very nice. And right after that, a matter of fact, a year later, yeah. you had a second Oscar nomination. Uh, playing in uh, a religious fanatic in Paul Newman's Rachel, Rachel. Is that what I was? Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you remember with Joanne. Who, yes, do you remember who, yes. I've just, uh, I'm just doing a movie with them again. You are. Only he's in it this time. Fred Chipsy's directing it. The uh, Empire Falls, I've just come sure. back from Maine. Sure. Not bad from a, for a young lady from Marblehead, Massachusetts, who started out possibly wanting to be a lawyer. Well, I think everybody from Marblehead, you know, most of the, <laughs> most of the signers of the Declaration of Independence live there, so I didn't if you're know Marblehead, that. you better achieve or uh, else. Is that the way it was? Sure. Was, was it a good childhood in Marblehead, Massachusetts? Uh, very good, very good intellectually, yes. Very good childhood, very beautiful part of the world. I'm sure it is. And yeah. it's a, when you, upon graduating, you went to Connecticut College. I went to boarding school in Vassalboro, Maine, and then I went to Connecticut College for Women, and mm -hmm. I was singing with bands, and I'd been acting in a community theater okay. all my life since I was six. I was singing in bars and winning bottles of champagne, really that kind of thing, you know. Then, uh, and then I thought I'd got to grow up and do something, and my father and my grandfather were lawyers from Harvard, so were. I thought I would do that. Harvard said, no, we don't take women. Uh -huh, so I said, uh -huh. okay, I'll go to Boston University. So I went for one year. There were 299 people in my class, three women. Some professors would not call on us at all. If we wanted to go and have a beer with any of the guys, we had to sit upstairs at lockovers. You couldn't mm -hmm, even go mm -hmm. in the bar downstairs. After a year of that, I said, and then, <laughs> then I got accepted at Harvard the following year. They decided to take women, but they wanted me to start all over again. They would only take women in the first year sure. class. I mean, women these yeah. days have no, no idea, idea how totally ridiculous what, life what, was. What opportunity was there for women back in, in, in the early 50s? I think there is always an opportunity for a woman who really wants to do something who's really highly motivated. Mm -hmm, but I mm -hmm. felt that it would be a very lonely life being a lawyer as a woman. You know, mm. I would never be in the old boys uh, group. Network. And my husband, my present husband, well, my, my huh? husband is yes. a, I don't plan to have any more actually. How long have you been married? <laughs> but, <laughs> I just, uh, being uh, that you threw that I've out. I've been I married just, to him uh, 
21 years, I Good think, because my son is 21 in February. Right. Okay. But anyway, um, you know, there is an old boys network in everything. And yes, I just thought is. it would be so lonely. I mean, mm -hmm. after that first year of law school, if I, if I stayed in law, for which I had an enormous aptitude and had no sure. reason to think I wouldn't be very successful and go into politics, which mm -hmm. I was already mm -hmm. doing. And mm -hmm. You were from Massachusetts. All that. But I, I, uh, I didn't like dealing with real life, one thing. And also I thought, this will just be the loneliest life in the world. And I mm -hmm. must say, even now, all the women law lawyers that I know, I, they, I think they are not in the old boys network when we get and probably never right will be. up there. Probably you never know, will. Yeah. But what you did they do... They carve out their own thing, but sure. still in all, it's... Uh, so you it made a decision. Didn't look good to me. Made a decision. I need to go elsewhere. Made a decision that, to come to New York. And that elsewhere was right here in the Big Apple. <laughs> yeah. And you were hired yeah. quickly. The uh, day I got here, actually, I was only here for a week, and I got that job. Well, they. How could anybody how be can so that lucky? Happen? Yeah, and of course you were Life hired. Life is luck. Yeah, <laughs> and being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, but how did you get in the right place? Luck. luck. That's it. Of course, immediately hired as one of eight people, is this true, to put together NBC's Today Show? Yeah. There was no morning television, and there nobody none, thought right? it would work. Mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm. think, I think that's what? why they, uh, the guy who produced it, Mort Werner, came from California. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the production assistants came from California. I mean, people who were already in nighttime television, who were in television, didn't want to have anything to do with it because they thought it wouldn't work in the that's morning. Right. You know? That's right. And, of course, it did work. I mean... <laughs> right. And then I was in London doing a play when um, they started morning television mm -hmm, and everybody mm -hmm. was saying the same thing, it'll never work, nobody will watch television in the morning. Yeah. Who were some of the people, that, I, they said eight people, who yeah, were some of the other people? Yeah, there was just eight of us, uh, oh well, two or three, James Fleming did the news, <clears throat> he was mm -hmm, the first one mm -hmm. on the air with that. and. Charlie Spear and Bill, they were in the newsroom, and then there were myself and a couple of production assistants and Mort Werner from California. And we just thought up everything, and we thought up Dave Carraway, too. How thrilling. <laughs> How thrilling. It was wonderful. <clears throat> Pioneer days are wonderful. I'd say. I, I, are you pleased when you look at the, the show today? I, de I never see it. Never I see haven't it? ever seen it. At the Evolution. I don't know if it's changed all that much. From yes, your original totally template. Different. You know? Absolutely, Is totally it? different. Because you guys winged when everything. We, right? we, everything. <laughs> when we did a commercial, we would take the material and get up and make the one minute whip right on that was and it. watch the clock. They used to put me to do radio commercials to go in a booth with a you know, microphone <clears throat> mm -hmm. and watch the clock and talk for a minute. Which I would. I mean, sure. today, yeah. <laughs> you can't utter a word that hasn't been written that by 16 written. Right. people at least. Right. But it's a different world. That's okay. It's do, just different. Do you regret looking back, leaving uh, Oh, no. TV? It was always my <coughs> nine-to-five job. I always wanted to be in the theater. I yeah. actually wanted to be in musicals, which I did. And sure. at the time I was on the Today Show, I was singing with bands out in the Great Neck, Long Island at the Swan Club with Jerry Jerome and his orchestra. Do you still sing? Oh, yeah, every chance I get, sure. <laughs> okay. I just have a wonderful anti-war uh, opera now that I've been doing with Arnold Weinstein and Bill Balcom, the first mm -hmm, piece they wrote mm -hmm. called Dynamite Tonight, which is uh, all opera. It's, a, it's an and well, it's another anti-war piece. Sure. <laughs> which I think will get on this summer again, probably. Very good. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with much more on Profiles with Estelle Parsons after these important messages. Welcome back to Profiles. I'm Tiffany Walker. A native of Massachusetts, Estelle Parsons originally studied to be a lawyer, and it was her background in law that attracted NBC to hire her right out of college. While at NBC, she was one of eight people to put together the template for the original Today Show in the 50s. Now back to Mickey Burns with actress Estelle Parsons. I did, I did want to mention that uh, while you were on the Today Show, uh, and it was up and running thanks to you and the other seven, uh, that you were one of the first female, which is quite a distinction, female political reporters on network TV. And you were there for five years on a Today Show as a political reporter. Well, that's another thing. You know, there was Pauline Fredericks who was on the radio as a political commentator. Mm -hmm. And there was not mm -hmm. one woman in news or no. politics on At that TV. Time. And when Dave asked me to start doing feature stories on the air, and I sure. did, 
then they liked it. So then they started sending me out, and they sent me out with Keith Favre to go to New Hampshire mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. year he was running for president. And I became actually the first woman to do any kind of news reporting, political reporting, for a television network. Historic. But in those days, it was before women's lib. Nobody mm -hmm. really cared, you know, whether women were doing it or not. Good.